next part is going to cover the 2.3 section in the manual and all those steps related for 2.3. In this section, you're going to need the side panels from box F and uh, some hardware accessories from uh, box G. Now, what it's going to entail and cover is installing the side panels, which involves the upper front support rails for our print platform. It also uh, includes the power receptacle on the one side, and I'm going to roll this over, and our limit and homing switches over here on our right side. So let's go ahead and dive into the process. We're going to go ahead and start, if you're facing, looking at the front of the printer, we're going to start with our left side panel. And that panel uh, is easy to recognize because it is the one with the little slot cut out with the chamfers on the edges for the power receptacle. Let me go ahead and clear my workspace and we'll get started. So there's a couple of things that I want to point out on this right hand panel before we install it. Uh, I just noted that the power uh, was right over here. When we install this power, uh, it has matched on this side little chamfers right here. And if I hold it up to the panel on the inside, those chamfers line directly up with where the uh, AC main power will plug in. It provides uh, protection with the switch so nothing can uh, rubber or uh, damage it. Now this uh, receptacle attaches to the inside. Nice thing about this is it's all pre-wired because it is AC mains. So everything is plugged in onto the backside. We want to make sure when we're doing this operation that these are nice and tight. We don't damage or pull on uh, these. And after we're done with the operation, we re-verify that everything is okay with these uh, particular wires. Now, when we go to the other side, there's some stuff we need to do on the power supply before we put the panel on. So let's go ahead and get started with the operation. You're going to need your 2.5 and your 2 millimeter hex for this operation. So first thing we need to do is install the linear rail. Once the linear rail is installed, we're going to bring it on over, install this panel, uh, this cable, and it has enough slack on this cable that we're going to be able to take this, cock it at a slight angle, slide the rail down, and then bring it in, and then attach our attachment screws. So there's two, two holes right here in the acrylic, and it's denoted in the, uh, the manual itself. And that lines up with the linear rod, when, which we got out of uh, package G, with these two holes right there. So we're going to use our M2 uh, hex driver and two of our uh, 153 screws and attach to that. Now, it has plastic uh, uh, inserts that are already attached to this side panel. We want the rod to be on that same side. So the screws come in from the outside and just grab your two millimeter hex driver and run these on down. Now you don't want this uh, extremely tight because this needs to have a little wiggle room in order for it to line up with this hole on the, on the 3D printer itself where the rod attaches at the bottom point. So I'm just going to run it down until it touches, back it off just a little bit. Same with that side. So you can see this rod is still a little bit loose and that's what we're looking for. Next is the power receptacle. And what we need is two of our 157 machine screws and then the nuts, the uh, 139s. And this is where the 2.5 uh, hex driver comes in. So all we need to do is take the panel and get it close to the, uh, the extension itself. And we're just going to hold this on up. The screw comes in from the outside towards the inside. And then we just take a nut and thread it onto the back side. Now, once those are pre-installed uh, and just run down with your hand, you're going to need a, your 7 millimeter wrench. You're just going to support and hold the nut on the back side and take the 2.5 from the front and give that a cinch. Okay, now that that is installed, uh, once again, double check these AC wires coming in. 
and make sure they're all nice and tight and plugged in. If any of these got damaged, loose, or disconnected during the assembly process, absolutely check and seek the help of a uh, certified electrician or a professional who's familiar with AC uh, uh, lines if you're not familiar with them, just to make sure these are absolutely uh, correct. All right, so on this assembly process, what we need to do, since we have this linear rod, is line it up right here with this bearing support uh, for the print platform. As it comes down, it's gonna line up and go into this bottom support for the, uh, the rod itself. Now, because we've installed this, there's a clearance problem right here, so we're gonna have it at a slight angle, slide it down, line this hole up, and then just sweep it on in. Real simple process, and there's plenty of slack in this cable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up with the bearing, slide it on down. I'm gonna look here at the bottom, line it up in there, and then we just sweep it on in. And that's pretty much it, that's really simple. Now we're gonna take our hardware, our screws, and we're gonna run these screws along this panel and on up. And uh, when you do this, make sure it's not uh, super tight. Just go ahead and tighten it up to where it just makes contact. Back it off slightly because we want a little play in this uh, unit at this time. Uh, because we've got some tramming to do it in a little bit uh, later section and then we're going to go ahead and move on to the other side. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna rotate this around to the other side and we're gonna install this panel. But before I do that, uh, I want you guys to take a look at the next procedure in the manual and read this one very carefully. That's 2.3-5. What this is involved in is the power supply itself. Now this printer is basically world compatible, meaning that uh, the, it was designed to work with uh, any input voltage on the AC, whether it be 110, 120, uh, 220 to 230. Now, depending on the region, like here in Hong Kong, it's 230 volts coming out of the wall. In the U.S., it's 110 to 120, depending on where you live. It's very critical you set this power supply up for the correct input voltage at this time. It uses a standardized uh, computer cable input cable, so you can get the receptacle or the wall side pretty much in any receptacle out there. You just got to make sure that you then set the power supply to match that correct input voltage. It's just like on the back of a computer. It has a... Uh, little switch right here and you flip it for, uh, over for 110, 120 or you flip it over for 220, 230. It's as simple as that. If you're not familiar with your region, definitely consult and check with a uh, certified electrician or professional and just ask them, hey, what, uh, what type of voltage are we running here? Uh, you may even be able to look at another appliance that you utilize in your home uh, and just see what kind of input voltage is on that. But just make sure you denote and set that up on the power supply correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to this side of the panel. Now, it's pretty much going to be the exact same procedure as installing this rod, holding it to the side, sliding it down, and bringing it on in. We don't have the uh, power receptacle on this side that we need to worry about, but we do have two sensors. Let me go ahead and grab that panel. Now we have these two sensors right here, and these are magnetic limit and homing switches. Uh, basically, it has a little magnetic sensor, and on the uh, gantry right up here, as it moves around, it has a little magnet on it, and as it gets close, it triggers the switch, and that tells the machine its position so it knows where it's at. It also stops the machine from overdriving itself, uh, meaning that if it were to lose resolution or, or position, if it were to move over thinking it's here and it's really here, when it comes close to the switch, it'll trigger the switch and it'll shut down the machine for safety purposes. Mm -hmm. Now these wires coming off, if you're familiar with the RC industry, are pretty much just like RC wires, three wires. You got positive, negative, and a signal right, right on that. It's just the same. When we install this, we wanna make sure that we don't pinch and or damage any of these wires. This panel, we definitely need to leave looser than this side. And the reason for that, let me go ahead and rotate this around, is this right here. There's a small chamfer as this panel touches this panel. And there's a little gap right in here. And what we're gonna be doing is installing some of the wiring down through here as we bring this panel nice and tight. So we wanna leave it loose enough that we're able to fit some of these wires on down through this, uh, this little uh, chamfer uh, when we assemble it up. So let's just go ahead and go through the exact same procedure. I'm gonna install the rod, slide it down, and then as I slide it down, I'm gonna put the, the rear sensor wire through this as I put the screws in along the panel.
Okay, now that I've got that rod installed, I'm just gonna take the baggie off of this wire. I'm gonna move these wires out of the way. So the procedure is the same. Make sure everything is nice and clear and out of the way on this. We're going to just go ahead and slide this rod move it a little tighter, see here? I'm gonna go ahead and slide this rod right on down through that bearing, making sure it's straight. I'm gonna line it up over this hole right in there. And instead of just rotating this in, I'm gonna deal with this wire right here, this rear sensor. That little chamfer that we were talking about, we're gonna just make sure that is lined up and in that chamfer as we bring this on in. So you can see where that goes. I'll right, take this around. And you can see where that goes right in here, right into that chamfer. And we're just gonna go ahead and install our hardware right along here and along the bottom, just like we did on the other one. All right, there we go. I've got all the screws installed along the side and along the, uh, the back panel here. And our next step is actually to rotate and tip the printer on its side and install the, uh, the screws for these linear rods right here on the bottom side. So we're gonna go ahead and just tip it on over. Just check your wiring, make sure you're not gonna pinch anything. And just put it right on its side. We'll just rotate it right here and here's our two little holes right here for these rods. We've already installed some screws right over here. Same procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and grab two of those. These are our 157 fine threads and you're going to need your 2.5 millimeter hex. Now at this point you can actually tighten these rods all the way tight because uh, it's going to start becoming our base uh, for squaring the machine knowing that all these screws along the sides are still uh, loose and along the back. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. And give, it, give it a nice little snug. And same here, I'm just gonna rotate this around to give me a little more freedom and spin this in. There we go. Since those are tight, I'm gonna just go ahead and pick the printer back up. And that's it, that concludes 2.3.